The Kitty Kingdom is one of the many parks in Nuka World that the Nuka World Raiders have asked us to clear so that they can move on in. Even if we have no plans to side with the Raiders and give them the park, the place is still dangerous and poses a threat to settlers, so it's a good idea to head on in. If we follow the road from Nuka Town north, we eventually arrive at a large walled-off park. Approaching from the south, we've discovered the Kitty Kingdom. Crouching down and pulling out our rifle, we can sneak on in, but our attempt at stealth is foiled. Well now, friends, it seems we have another uninvited guest to the park. Up, up, performers, it's time for another show. Though I doubt you'll even make it to the theater, stranger. Shall we take bets on where this one shuffles off? What do you think, friends? The tunnels? The fun house? Oh, great. Well, we just met the boss, and he doesn't sound like he's in a good mood. With that, we begin a magical kingdom, and we have to discover and search three sections. The fun house, the tunnels, and the theater. But let's start with our immediate surroundings. Heading to the northeast, we see big boarded off restrooms. Next to these bathrooms is an employee's only area, but this gate does not appear to work. However, we do see a path back there. We need to figure out a way to get back there. Turning north, we see a huge hole in the side of a house. Oh, are you feeling lost? Pathetic. Calm down, strange voice from the sky. I just got here. I'm not lost yet. Inside the house, we see that this was some sort of shop. We find cash registers laying out. There are a few skeletons on the western end, and it must have been a souvenir shop. We find toys on a shelf. The second floor has caved in, forming a rubble ramp. Up here, we find an ammo canister on a shelf and a consumer animatronic with a unique Nuka World costume. Nuka World comes with a bunch of these handsome outfits, great for clothing our settlers. But this house is a dead end, so heading down, the only path forward is to turn west. We see a large Ferris wheel off in the distance and a green mist floating all around us. Do you enjoy that lovely glowing mist? Feels great to us. Why, we've got sprayers all over Kitty Kingdom to keep you cool and irradiated. Oh, that sprayer was spraying radioactive mist on us. And we were getting up to 18 rads per second at one point. Oh gosh, I can already see this is gonna be a blast. I'm on my assassin, I'm not wearing power armor, so radiation is a real danger for this character. I'm gonna go ahead and put on a gas mask and pop a radex. Let's pay close attention to what I start with here. I'm starting with 30 radex and 34 rad away. Let's see how many I have left by the time we're done. Where are you even going? At this rate, you'll starve to death in there. Well, I don't know where I'm going. That's the point of exploring. I'm trying to figure it out, man. Is this guy gonna criticize my every move? We see that one of these rides is still working, a revolving teacup ride, and we find ghouls enjoying it. As we back up a bit to get a better shot, we discover the Ferris wheel. We'll head up there in just a moment. After killing the ghouls, we can hop on the spinning teacup ride to loot the bodies. On the other end, we see some shops and carnival games, and we see a couple ways forward. We can go east towards some lollipop town, or we can go west towards the Ferris wheel. We'll start by going west. Here, we find a park medallion dispenser. We need to discover all of these in order to complete Nero's quest precious metals. He told us there were two in the Kitty Kingdom. Looks like we found one. Let's keep our eyes open for number two. The Ferris wheel is not moving. We find some lockers next to the Ferris wheel where we can loot some Radex, a first aid kit, and a duffel bag in the closed locker. There's a skeleton hanging in one of the Ferris wheel cars. We see a button here, but when we punch it... Uh, we get a notice that Nuka World's main power is out. Looks like these might work, but we gotta go to the Nuka World power plant first. 
Oh, and the radiation just got to me. I'm so used to not even paying attention to radiation and power armor that I would have died if not for nerd rage. I'm gonna have to pay close attention. After chugging a refreshing beverage, we can turn around and head towards those shops. We see one was a coffee and donut shop. Ah! A turret! This guy really doesn't want us inside. After killing the ghoul and loading his corpse, we see that lollipop town to the east, but we've also discovered a path towards this turret that we destroyed next to a gingerbread house. Here we find a series of Nuka Cola mixers, and heading west, we find the Rally Roller Ride, a bunch of little cars on a spinning wheel. Like the Ferris wheel, this one has an activation button that doesn't work until we restore power, which we can hide behind for cover. Thank God for Blitz! I need to be more careful to make sure that I've got Radex going because by the time those ghouls attacked, I was at half life thanks to the radiation. <clears throat> Well, we blitzed ourselves into some sort of courtyard next to the rally rollers. We see the falling awning of a ruined coffee shop to the right, some boarded up bathrooms to the north in front of us, and another exit. Going around the walls, sure enough, we've found another way in and out of the park. So there's a southern entrance and exit, and a western one. This is a great point of reference for orienting ourselves later. But unless we want to leave the park, we have reached a dead end, which means the only path forward is to turn around and head east towards the lollipop town. But before we head that way, we can step inside this crumbling gingerbread house. Maker, maker, pastry maker. Shoot and slash and bite and breaker. <laughs> Gosh, this guy needs to lay off the Brothers Grimm. Despite his taunting, however, we don't see anyone up here. Climbing up the stairs to the ruined second floor. Nope, nothing. We can head back downstairs to loot. Oh, then we see him. <laughs> well, that was a little clumsy. Don't worry, I'll get better, I promise. On this bottom level, we can loot an ammo box on a couch and a personal footlocker against the southern wall. Heading back upstairs, we see a path to the west and some bridges connecting the rooftops of some of these structures made from scrap. Creeping along, we see that this leads us out into the open area next to the rally rollers and the western exit. The scaffolding leads us on top of that coffee and donut shack and then on top of the Nuka-Cola mixing stations, but there's nothing up here. I guess this is just supposed to be useful for snipers trying to avoid the ghouls. Retracing our steps back into the gingerbread house, we find another exit from this second floor, a scrap ramp out a hole to the north. This leads us to the platform upon which sat the machine gun turret, also overlooking the courtyard next to the western exit. However, this connects through a hole in the wall to another building. This must have been a magazine and souvenir shop. We see lots of magazine stands tipped over and peering out the window, But the jig is up. We get attacked by another legendary. And an 
another legendary. Holy cow, how many legendary feral ghouls was that? Well, the upside is we get decent loot, got a rapid shotgun, dead-eye combat shotgun, and a wounding missile launcher. After the ghouls are dead, we can exit the house to a large courtyard to the north. In the middle of this open space is a big fountain that no longer works, but we have to be careful because we are surrounded by more of those sprayers. Heading north, we see some train tracks going underneath a bridge. Not sure what those are for yet. And in the middle of this courtyard, we find a handy map. I ignored and passed the ones I saw earlier, but now that things are starting to get a little bit more complicated, I'm gonna pay close attention to this. This is really helpful. We see the southern entrance where we entered at the very bottom, the western entrance next to the rolling racers, which we just left. And it looks like from here we can go two ways. We can go north to finish exploring this lollipop area, and we can go west across some train tracks to start scaling the steps towards the castle proper. Sure enough, to the north, we find a bridge leading deeper to that lollipop area. Turning east, we find a door into a delicatessen. And southeast of this is the path that presumably leads towards the castle entrance. Where to begin? For now, we'll head north across the bridge. I'm thinking this lollipop land may be a dead end. And since I want to explore everything, we'll start here. There's a ruined shop in front of us. We can go west or east. Before making up our minds, we see some ghouls. We'll start by going west. Here we pass more of those deadly sprayers and a ghoul creeps out. Creeping to a corner, we can snipe off any others that come our way. Heading north and up some short stairs, we see another feral ghoul on the other side of this fence. But Blitz comes in handy. We arrive at the Nuka Racers, and just outside is the second Park Medallion Dispenser. So these weren't train tracks, they were roller coaster tracks. Nearby we see a sign, attention, clothes required to ride. Think of others. Was that really a problem? We find more ghouls wandering the tracks, and they're already wounded. Looks like these roller cars can do some serious damage. Well, we've come upon the wall. We could go east up the track, but I want to make sure we didn't miss any buildings, so turning around, we can head back towards the entrance to this section and head east. More ghouls creep from the rubble. And here we find the Nuka Rocket Ride. This is right next to a big tipped over bottle serving as a tunnel for the Nuka Racers. And we find more ghouls. Man, they really love these tracks. After sucking down some more Radex and Radaway, we can move east. After killing a ghoul we spotted through our scope, we discover the Fun House. Right next to this is a ramp going off to the southeast, and here we find some ghouls. Looks like this path just leads to some tracks and back towards that gingerbread house. So instead, we'll turn around and head into the fun house. We arrive in a dimly lit room covered in garbage. Welcome boys and girls to the fun house. And aren't we having fun? 
How does this guy know we're here? Are there cameras everywhere or something? We see two doors in this entry area, but the first one is chained. We don't find anything on the ticket desk here except for a bell, which means the way forward is through the double doors. Warning, Funhouse may cause motion sickness. Do not vomit in walkways. <laughs> Well, let's just hope the funhouse isn't functional so that we don't get sick. Opening the door, we find a bunch of mirrors. Don't worry. The mirrors are too dirty to reflect anything. In your case, I'd say that's probably a benefit. Ooh, major burn from disembodied voice. Well, we see a big broken pane of glass leading towards a symbol clacking monkey. First, let's turn around and see what's down this path. Heading west, we disable a mine on the ground. This brings us to another fork, north towards a ball, or west towards a flamingo. Going west towards the flamingo, we find a mannequin in a pink dress. The only way beyond this is to the east, where we find a laser tripwire next to an oil slick. And we find the ghoul. By all means, keep trying. You're doing great. Heading south and round the corner, we see that the mannequin is holding a combat knife wearing a chef hat. Turning around and going south, we can loot some pre-war money from a duffel bag, but this is a dead end. However, when we head back towards that ghoul, we see a path labeled exit. Okay, that must be the way we're supposed to go. But I want to make sure I didn't miss anything down those other paths, so retracing our steps, we can go north down the path with the red ball, which leads to the broken pane of glass that we saw next to the symbol clacking monkey. Okay, so this would have been a dead end anyway. Retracing our steps, we can go back towards the exit. If we turn left, we find an ammo box, but to continue, we turn right. Oh, Rad Roach. Heading east down the path, we twist and turn until we find a frag mine to disarm and the corpse of a raider. Perhaps it was the raider who laid all of these landmines. We find one more hiding in a nook nearby, and at last we find the path out by winding our way to the east. Here we find one more frag mine and a big set of double doors to the exit. Oh, what? Goodness, I didn't even see that. Looks like the door was booby-trapped with an explosive on the ceiling. I'm thinking a makeshift bomb. We find ourselves in a portrait-lined hallway. Looking down, we see a door on the other end. And in front of this door is a conveyor belt? Looking east on the conveyor belt, we see... Ooh, a man in a top hat bending down. It's not a mannequin. He is alive. Is that the owner of our disembodied voice? He stands behind bulletproof glass. We can't shoot him. Ah! Right through another trap! At least we survived. Okay, what's this next horror? We see two spinning Nuka-Cola bottles, each with a ramp attached. Oh, great. Leaping onto the red one. We can use this to leap upon a Nuka-Cola and Cappy display stand, but there's nothing here. So, leaping back onto the platform, we can spin around once. No. Too far. Spin around again. Yes! No! Ow. Thankfully, there are some steps right to the south. We can try again. But our failure alerted some nearby ghouls. Running off until they can't see me. We got him. Looks like this voice turned off the conveyor belt, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Rounding the corner to find the next one. Bingo. Okay, let's try this again. Leaping upon platform number one. No, too far. And go for it. Yes. Now we're on platform number two. And go for it. Ah, bingo. But you know, there is that hole in the wall. Uh, but I did just make it over here. Uh, I'm going to hate myself if I don't know what's on the other side of it. Jumping down into the water and creeping through the hole in the wall, we find ourselves in another flooded room with some sort of green glowing spinning tunnel in the middle of this room. We see big rectangular holes in the bottom of this tunnel. No idea what this is, though. Perhaps it's some trial that is before us. There's some stairs leading out of the water to another locked security door. We can't open it from this side. Oh, well, now we know what's back here, but we gotta go through this jumping thing again. There we go. On the other side, we find a terminal called Hypno Hall's Controls and a door to the east. 
This door leads down some steps to another terminal, but this terminal is not locked. We can use it to unlock the nearby security door. The door opens and we find ourselves, oh, this was the door next to that conveyor belt. Okay, so we've unlocked a shortcut. Looks like our disembodied voice is still there. Let's see if we can find him. Heading back to the platform, we can hack into this Hypno Hall's controls, which is locked with a novice lock, Funhouse Halls of Hallucination. After doing so, we find only one option. Set reduced nausea mode on. Uh, okay, let's try that. After exiting, we can open the nearby door. Okay, we see big green spinning discs. But I'm curious, if this is nausea mode on, let's see what it looks like when we turn nausea mode off. Ooh, much faster. Throwing caution and possibly vomit to the wind, we can leave nausea mode off and venture forward. Well, heading into the tunnel to the east. Oh. Listen to the sound of my voice. You're going to die. <laughs> After our friend ends his mad cackling, we find a tunnel that has a stash of caps next to a new Coca-Cola Quantum, and we find the body of a raider. Next to his corpse is a copy of Scav Magazine, issue number three. Mutant Fists of Steffi Knuckles. Plus 10% hand-to-hand -hand weapon damage. Sweet, I'll take it. But we're at a dead end, so heading back down the tube, we can take the next one to the west. Uh, after fighting through this nausea-inducing spinning, we come to a small hallway with another tube to the west. We find ourselves in a room with more spinning discs on the walls, but also on the ceilings and floor. And if we stand on them, they move us around. And so to continue, we head to the south. But oh no, what's this? Big chunks of metal are cut into the spinning wheel. And on the other side... <laughs> ah! Oh, man. I had no chance to get a stealth critical. They both spawned as soon as I exited the tube. Well, trying again, this time trying to stealth in, we can see through those spinning holes and realize that this is that big green tube and that flooded room we passed. That's a tricky one for stealth characters. Thank goodness for Nerd Ridge. Well, we survived, and where are we now? In some sort of star room? We see a door to the south. This leads us to... Oh no! This is right out of Escher! Yeah, after those spinning vortexes of vomit, something like this is the last thing I want to see. Well, there's a door on the floor, but this just leads to a floor. We see a room over there, and then what's this? A window in the floor? Oh, that's a cool touch. Look at that. Leads to a little grassy box. There are stairs above us, but these don't go anywhere. Heading east, we see a corpse of a raider draped over a table. Next to him is another door. Drink Nuka Cola today. Oh, fun. Turning around and looking up, we see a door on the ceiling, but no way to reach it. I struggled with this for quite some time, but I finally opened it by jumping onto this red chair and taking some jet. <sighs> we tripped an explosive trap, and out from the door fell, What? what is all of this? Caps? Oh no and we have to loot each of them individually. Ah, this is just torment. It doesn't work like a bottle cap mine, no. We have to loot each of these individually. Looks like 50 or so bottle caps. Ooh, and a Nuka Cola Quantum. Heading up the steps, we arrive in a twisted bathroom. There's a bathroom mirror on the ceiling, but like the door in the last room, we can't reach this. And I ultimately was unable to find a way to do so without a jetpack. But if we have a jetpack and manage to sail on up, inside we find a fusion core and an XL, the rarest chem in the entire game. Nice little find there. And then we see an opening to the east leading to a red door. What's this? Oh, <laughs> 
On the other side of the red door is a big rotating platform filled with feral ghouls, some of which are legendary. But this Dagon red door is programmed to close a few seconds after opening. But wait, I've got an idea. Got my leg there. Now that I'm out of mines, let's try grenades. Brilliant! Not so brilliant! <laughs> okay, think I need to be a bit more careful now. Let's try this again. Got it. There we go. We see on our Pip Boy compass that there's one more enemy in here, but it looks like we've killed everyone. Not sure where this enemy goes. Heading inside, we can loot all of the feral ghouls. We find a legendary troubleshooting knuckles on this guy, but when we're done, which door was it? Oh no, I don't know where I came in at. Well, only one thing to do, and that's to open each of these doors one by one. Let's start with this red one. Ooh, looks like some sort of flamethrower trap. It's a lot of effort to keep myself facing this thing so I know which door I just opened. After the flames die down, we can open it again and squeeze in there. There we go. What was that? A rad roach? Did a rad roach just try to attack me? I don't see a rad roach, though. This was supposed to be a reenactment of a famous scene in the movie Psycho, with a skeleton in a shower screaming and a mannequin holding a knife. But all of the explosives I threw in the room knocked the skeleton to the ground and destroyed the mannequin. So heading out and opening the first door to the left, we leap in to see that we're in oh, some sort of hallway that gets smaller and smaller. There's a mannequin down there, but we're too big for that door. So it looks like a dead end. Opening the next one to the left. Now there's a lovely sight. Ooh, someone exploded. A raider in here. Oh, and on the ground next to him is a Traitor. And then we see it, there's a tripwire. I managed to not trip it due to my perks. Heading out, going left and opening the next door, we can leap in to see that we're in some sort of tiny dining room. There's some toys and derby hats on the ground. Oh, what the heck? Is there a rad roach out there? I don't see one for now. There's a pile of skeletons in the southern corner, next to a giddy up buttercup, a pile of burned books, and a bunch of other toys. These surround an advanced locked floor safe. And inside we find a cache of ammunition and chems. This was supposed to be a bunch of toys in derby hats, smoking cigars and counting money. The burned books were propping up a teddy bear in one of the chairs. The skeletons were piled in each of the four corners of this room giving me the impression that the toys had murdered the men in here, donned their hats, and then sat down at their table to count their spoils. Heading out and quickly opening the first door to the left, we can leap in. Oh, this is where I came from. Okay. Heading out and opening the next door to the left. Ow, it's a concrete wall. So, next door to the left. Okay, something is definitely attacking us now. Oh, and it's one of those rad sprayers. Ah. Ooh, but we see something on the wall. Making sure we've got our cappy glasses on, we find one of the hidden cappies, which we need to complete Sierra Petrovita's quest. Here we also find a huge roll of Nuka Cade tickets, but I'm getting doused in radiation here, so heading out quickly and opening the next door to the left, we see a, a nice family scene. A couple of mannequins with a mannequin in the crib reaching for a bottle in the daddy mannequin's hand. Heading out, moving left to the next one. Well, you're a bit hardier than those others, it seems. But not much smarter, I'm afraid. 
We found it! And we found that doggone rad roach. He was out there, we just missed him. Got him. Well, we could leave now, but I want to finish exploring this room, but we need to make sure we don't get lost, so we're going to have to count doors so that we know how many to pass to get back to this one. Heading left to door number one leads to a little room. This room was supposed to depict two teddy bears on a date. They had just finished a meal of fish. They were sitting on the couch watching TV when the gentle bear hands a bouquet to his gentle lady. But my explosives messed this all up. Heading out one room over makes two. Ow, this leads us to a room on the other side of one of those spinning cylinders. Okay. Heading out again into the left. This makes three. And we're in a bathroom with a bathroom scale trap on the ground. But I didn't see what this trap was connected to. We can loot a first aid box on the wall and a mirror above the sink. All my explosives messed up here was the skeleton, which was originally slumped over on the toilet next to a plunger. Heading out and next one to the left is number four. Oh, and this is the one with the flamethrower traps. Okay, we've done a complete loop. That means we need to head back one, ah, two, three. No, that's the TV room. Four, there we go. Ah, oh, we made it. Heading down the hallway and through the green door, we see a waving Nuka and Campy animatronic. This leads to a waiting room where we find a doorway to the left and a chain door to the east. This eastern door leads us back out to the entrance. Okay, so we've done a big loop. But what we never found was that room that had the guy in the top hat. So heading north into the employees only area, we can go up the steps and round the corner to pass through a door to the west. Oh no. Oh, we missed him. Racing west. Sorry, already gone, little raider. Don't worry, I've still got plenty of surprises in store for you. Doggone it all. But wait, he called us a raider. Oh, he thinks we're a Nuka World raider, which makes a lot of sense. He has no reason to think otherwise, but that may explain why he's being so nasty towards us. On a console to the north, we find a Nuka Lixer recipe. This allows us to mix a new flavor of Nuka Cola at any Nuka Cola mixing station. If you're interested in all of the flavors of Nuka Cola, check out my video where I covered every single one, which you can watch here. And next to this is a terminal. The Funhouse Control System. User, H. Benson signed in. The first option, System Access, has four options. We can control the Hall of Mirrors, but it says communication could not be established. We can then try the Bottle Jumps, but again, communication cannot be established. Then we can try Hypno Halls, but the only option we have is to turn on Reduced Nausea Mode. And finally, the Spinning Room, where we can turn the spinning floors off. Not much good that'll do us now. Backing out, we can then explore user logs. The first one is called Living in the Fun House. After the crew divided up the park for living accommodations, Bradley is over the moon. We get to live in the Fun House. It's a ton of room, but every memory I have of this place involves someone getting nauseous from the spinning. I'm glad he's happy about it at least. It's been far too long since I saw a smile like that on his face. I don't think he's realized it yet with everything that's been going on but he would have graduated high school last month. I know it's selfish, but part of me is glad the attack happened when it did so I can have my son here, safe with me. Oh, so this must have been a pre-war park employee working here at Nuka World with his son the day the bombs dropped 200 years ago. In the next one, Out in the Storm, woke up to find that Bradley had gone out in a radiation storm. He said he couldn't take living like this, and if the radiation was going to kill us, he'd rather die quickly. I don't know if he'll ever realize how much it hurt me to hear him say that. Luckily, the storm doesn't seem to have hurt him at all. In fact, that ankle he sprained messing around in the spinning room last week seems to have instantly healed. Maybe whatever mutation the initial storms gave us has somehow made us immune to radiation. Thank goodness for that. So the park employees were exposed to a rad storm, and it sounds like this started to turn them into ghouls. People are only healed by radiation if they have become ghouls. Uh-oh, I'm afraid of what we're about to read next. In the next one, snapped during the attack. 
Something snapped in me during the last attack on Kitty Kingdom. Maybe it was pent-up rage from Bradley leaving, but during the attack I lost it and bit into the neck of one of the attackers. At least, that's what they tell me. I don't remember. It's all hazy after the attack started. God, and I'm so hungry suddenly. I've probably eaten 20 potatoes today, but I can't seem to shake it. Why am I so hungry? I want... And then gibberish. Okay, someone's turning feral here. In the final one, this new group is different. I haven't been in here in years. Not since Herman changed. Oh no. This terminal is still signed in under his name. I can't even remember how long it's been since he was able to have a conversation. Maybe Rachel is right about needing to leave to find a cure for the affliction. Anyway... That new group of psychos that moved into Nukatown, USA is clearly different than the last one. Stronger and way more aggressive. They pushed us all the way back to the funhouse, which I haven't had to go into for years. I better start getting this place ready as a fallback again. It doesn't seem like those gangs are going to be dissuaded easily. I just hope that our defenses can hold them off long enough to find a cure. This sounds like it was written by the disembodied voice, the guy in a top hat whom we saw through the glass. Sounds like Herman went feral years ago. And then the owner of the disembodied voice came back here hundreds of years later, wrote this note, and started to fortify his defenses. And we get the impression at the very end that he's looking for a cure to being a ghoul. Well, at least this Rachel is anyhow, though we don't yet know who she is. A cure for ghoulism? Is that even possible? Well, there certainly would be demand if a cure was found. The story of Aqua Cura told us that. But from everything I've read and seen, I was always under the impression that when you turn ghoul, you're ghoul forever. It's not a virus or a bacteria that can be killed and cured. It's a degenerative disease that rots the mind. But maybe these ghouls know something we don't. Exploring this little shack, we find a bed. There's some blocks stacked nearby, but they don't seem to say anything. There is another bed back here. One was likely Herman's, and the other was likely his son's. It's sad to learn that his son abandoned him like that. After sleeping to restore our health and waiting until morning, we can turn north to find another terminal. This one isn't locked, but we can use it to unlock the nearby security door, which leads to that platform overlooking that flooded room with the spinning cylinder. All right, so we've got everything unlocked now. But the fastest way out is to retrace our steps, go out the employee's door to the end of the maze, through the lobby, and out the main door. With that, we fully explored the western part of Kitty Kingdom. We could try and run through that bottle tunnel up the tracks, but instead, we'll retrace our steps where we can kill another ghoul, then head back across that bridge towards the map where we stopped earlier. We now have one path forward, and according to this map, it leads to the entrance to the castle. But we'll have to tackle that section of the park in tomorrow's video. What are your thoughts on the Kitty Kingdom so far? Was the fun house as infuriating and nausea-inducing as it was for me? And what do you think of poor Herman and his son? It saddens me to think that it's likely we've already killed both of their ghouls. But of course, it had to be done. And what about ghoulism? Do you think it can be cured? Or is it a permanent affliction? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week on a wide range of topics spanning all of the games. And if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, part two of The Kitty Kingdom, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a brand new shirt in the shop, folks. Show no mercy. We have a portrait on the front with the text show no mercy below it. I also have a version that says Ad Victorium. This shirt comes in a version with just the text Ad Victorium and just the portrait. My shirts come in a wide array of colors and in a variety of sizes. I've got a bunch of other designs and other products, including posters, hoodies, mugs, stickers, and more. You can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with episode 2 of... The Kitty Kingdom.